loose ball, and it's going to go. And he buries it in the net to tie it. It's good! Great to be back home after a couple of road games for this broadcaster as we're back at Mac Aldridge Field, boys soccer for the first time in 2023. Hello again, everybody. I'm Evan Massoud. We are trackside here at the stadium JV action wrapping up behind us getting ready for a varsity heavyweight matchup between Durfee and New Bedford Hilltoppers coming into play today at four and one fresh off a loss to their conference opponent Dartmouth who they played on Tuesday we had the girls game over on Dartmouth community media I had the call for that one the girls won the boys lost here at home Good news is that that's just one conference loss. They already have a conference win, beating Brockton the game pre uh, previously, two games previously, that is. So a good 4-1 to one start on the season. Now for New Bedford, 2-2-1. Two, two, and one. They have had trouble scoring goals in the young season, and Durfee's been pretty good defensively if you look at their scores up and down the schedule through five games. New Bedford just three goals put in in those five games. So if I'm Durfee, try to get a lead early and then do what you can do on defense to limit a struggling Whalers team. That would probably go well for them tonight and probably be a good recipe for a win. Hilltoppers trying to go 2-1 and one in the conference. Again, their first matchup with New Bedford. It's tonight. Stay with us. Live coverage right after the break. Back to Romero. Romero forges ahead. Touchdown, Hilltoppers. Coming in, you're really like scared. You might be a little nervous, but I think being a part of a team gives you friends who can come with you all the way through high school and then coaches looking out for you. I think as an athlete, you can improve and learn like the art of dedication. That shot taken. Cadet will take the shot and score. Hard work pays off. Like for my freshman year, starting off hardly knowing anything about sports to now my junior year, having almost all the school records in track and field. I feel like this school shows a lot of opportunities in classrooms and out of classrooms. High flip to Espinal. Open three, got it! <laughs> Big time hit from Granham. Durfee has such a great community, such great pride, you know, where we're people who love to be here, we love to compete, we love to play, and it's, it's such a great um, opportunity. Corralled by Kamara, full steam ahead. Weaving through traffic, takes the shot, and it's good! Kamara, coast to coast! I've made a lot of great friends playing sports. I really appreciate how it fosters a community amongst all of the athletes, even in between sports seasons. Good pass up the field, gets some good backspin on it, and it is a loose ball, shot, and it's good! To tie it, it's good! Madeiras on the PK! You have a lot of support and a lot of people around you. It's a good environment, especially the sports teams. Great. O'Connell with the three, and the lead is over 30. I know how much pride it takes to be a topper, so it made me work harder so I can be more successful. really great to just be able to learn accountability, reliability, um, just getting involved in school and I feel like the best way to do that is to join a sport. In the air in a deep left field, Coppola heading back at the wall, it's gone! Three run home run for Montia and it's a two run game!
Welcome back live to Mac Aldridge Field, everybody. Evan Massoud with you as we are just about ready to get this one started. A couple minutes after 6 o'clock, the uh, JV game ended in spectacular fashion, um, but ran just a little bit long. Durfee tied the game with less than 10 seconds in regulation to force the tie for JV. Really spectacular ending. Um, so they had a couple great opportunities where the New Bedford goalie came out of net and they weren't able to capitalize, but literally with just seconds left, they pulled even at 2-2. So JV ended with a tie and now Varsity looking to bounce back after that loss at Dar um, against Dartmouth on Tuesday, which was their first loss. I mentioned that in the open. So looking to bounce back tonight against the Whalers. Get their first look at them here this season. New Bedford at 2-2-1. Two, two and one. Durfee at 4-1 and 0. Oh. Hilltoppers in their home red uniforms. New Bedford wearing the road whites. And it has just been another spectacular day here on the South Coast weather-wise. The last one we're going to see for a little while, unfortunately. Tomorrow's supposed to be rather cloudy. But right now, sun setting and 68 degrees in Fall River with a light breeze. Always a little breezy here at the stadium. But we are very lucky and very thrilled to have it be dry here. I'm supposed to go to a concert Saturday night and the weather doesn't look too favorable. It's at Gillette Stadium, so this will be breaking out the ponchos for that one <laughs> because... Uh, not looking to be too good. Huh. Athletic director Brad Buston there at the top of your screen on the far side talking with our officials. Officials wearing green for tonight's conference game. And Durfee here as the host team electing to go with two officials. Um, Starting so Dartmouth on Tuesday for the conference game, we had three officials, but tonight just the two. Waiting on the opening whistle here to get going. And here we go. Clock is running, and we are underway here at Durfee. Let's run down tonight's starters for the visiting Whalers, led by head coach John Masarocco. As a test, Durfee's goalie right out of the chute here. For the Whalers, we have number four, Gabriel Pixoto. Number seven, Kevin Herrera. Number nine, Joao Pedro de Santos. Number 10, Troy Rocha. Number 14, Carlins Jean-Pierre. Number 15, Jose Correas. Number 17, Diogo Tavares. Number 18, Carter Barboza. Number 19, Nicholas Rosa. Number 24, Idahi Mejia. And number one in goal, Nelson Molina. And we have our first whistle of the game. On the other side for Durfee, led by head coach Tiberio Mello. It is going to be number three, Selvin Marquez. Number four, Chris Pinsokol. Number seven, Lenz Bersiquo. Number eight, Patrick Barros. Number nine, Leonardo Alfama. Number 10, Gilberto Correa. Number 13, Landon Freitas. Number 20, Evan Carvalho. Number 21, Kawa Damas. And number 24, Darren Flores. In goal for Durfee, number 12, Xavier Inacio. We saw Inacio last year in net. This year, his junior season, defending for Durfee. 
Jake Fitzgerald on camera tonight. And I'm thrilled to be with you here from Durfee. Game number three of the week for me. Nice to be back home, though. Of course, always enjoy spending time with our friends over in Dartmouth at DCTV. Um, as you know, we uh, usually team up for the dartmouth Durfee conference matchups. And um, so did girls volley um, volleyball, excuse me, girls soccer on Tuesday. And uh, then yesterday, field hockey. Two really great games. Girls soccer, Durfee came out on top. Field hockey, lost one nothing. Could have easily been a scoreless game. Could have easily been a 1-1 game. Could have easily been a one nothing game for Durfee. Um, it was that tight. And... Um, but the Hilltoppers, unfortunately, came out on the short end of the stick for that one. But girls' soccer looked really good after uh, losing three straight. They snapped that streak. And um, as we had a whistle here, Emma McDonald went down in that game, never returned with about 20 minutes left to go. And um, next week we'll see girls' soccer. Hopefully we'll have an update on her uh, for that game. But um, she never came back in. Hopefully not going to be out for too long. Timeout on the far side here as we stop the clock at 36.56. Looks like one of the New Bedford players went down. So tonight, game three of four for me this week, and then tomorrow, girls volleyball from the field house as we restart here. Uh, we're just a couple seconds behind. Let's sync it up. Right about there. We're not tied into the scoreboard here, but running in conjunction with. Uh, so we'll see girls volleyball tomorrow for the first time as well. So great to... Um, you know, rarely does this work out for us, but luckily it did. We're getting to see all five of the teams we broadcast in the fall um, in one week's time. We saw football last Friday, the girls' soccer Tuesday, the away game, field hockey yesterday, the away game, today, boys' soccer, and then tomorrow, girls' volleyball. So um, good first full week of broadcast. It gets us all, gets us to see everybody and uh, gets everybody a little bit of air time as well. So... Our third official has made it to the field. <laughs> I mentioned that earlier. I said, usually there's three. That's why I mentioned it, because I said this is not usually the case when it's a conference game. Clock actually stopped at 35-14. So we're picking up here 35-10 and counting. Um, so ran a little behind schedule here, so had to get the flags out and get everybody situated. So that was the stoppage there.
Durfee off to a decent start to the year. Coach Mello pleased with his team. Thinks they could very easily be 5-0. and um, I said things just didn't click against Dartmouth. A 2-1 loss. Durfee, that was the first time they didn't put up more than one goal in a game. Their, their wins this season, 2-1 against Diamond. 3-1 against Taunton. 2-1 against Brockton. 5-3 against Somerset. And now here... Uh, then against Dartmouth was the loss, and now here a game against New Bedford. It'll be their sixth and uh, final home game to start the season. This is six straight games at home to begin the fall season, and then now they're going to go on the road for four after tonight. Um, and part of that was because the Brockton game got switched uh, last week because they wanted to do a doubleheader. Uh, there was a banner celebration, a banner unveiling for 100 goal scorers, 100 point scorers, if you will. Um, and so they did that in between. So we did kind of a double header. They had girls playing first, then they did a ceremony, and then um, then the boys played in the evening. And we will have we we did have cameras on site for that, so we will have that ceremony for you on next Tuesday's girls coverage uh, when BR comes to town. So we'll have that during the halftime break. and um, But kind of a strange schedule. I mentioned it yesterday in the field hockey game as well that, um, you know, field hockey started on the road basically for Durfee. So we're seeing bunches of games, not just, you know, home on, say, Tuesday, away Thursday, then away Tuesday, back home Thursday. We're seeing big chunks of away games and, and home games. Um, I mean, honestly, not going to lie, it kind of makes it a little challenging when we're putting a schedule together because you, then you end up seeing a lot of the same team at one point and then you don't see them again for a while because they're away for so long, kind of get out of touch a little bit. Um, like For example, uh, if we're looking at the schedules, right now, unless something changes, we're not going to see boys soccer until second week of October because they're going to be away for so many games after today. Um, they literally don't come back home until October 24th, but we're going to be out in Dartmouth on the 17th, um, again, with the DCTV partnership. So that makes it very challenging. Um, you know, so, but uh, some of those changes at the schedule are kind of what caused that. Um, and, you know, we roll with the punches. We do what we can. Free kick for the Whalers. That one sailing, and does it stay in bounds? No, it ended up tailing away. Kind of sliced at it, if you will, with the toes. That was Freitas with the throw in. Jeffrey with a free kick here from pretty well up the field. Good spot to kick from, but a low line drive is going to be headed out of play. Now it's taken by Gilberto Correa. A little bit about New Bedford as we see the Whalers for the first time here this season. It'll be our only time seeing them um, for soccer, but in general, New Bedford we haven't seen yet. And um, for the Whalers, in a little bit of a rebuild, um, only four returning starters, uh, starters and that are seniors, so not a lot of, let's say, uh, varsity field time in the lineup for Coach Masarocco. But there's leadership there, and um, 
of course, that helps, you know, for the underclassmen. And, you know, it's kind of the great example of, you know, next man up, next player up. Um, for Coach, he's relying on those four seniors help the underclassmen so that they're in good shape for the next couple of years. Um, you know, look up and down the roster, there are more sophomores than there are seniors, and oh, it's basically an even split between juniors and sophomores. So the bulk of the team's going to be back um, next season. So if there are some growing pains here, you know, the good news is that this season will give them a lot of experience on varsity and be ready for next season. Julio Guardado, number 13, with the throw in. Not a starter, but has checked in. Um, he came in during that injury break. Good crowd here tonight. Uh, the freshman team was playing out on Skip Lewis Field. We had football practice behind. A chance for Durfee out in front, and the whistle sounds. Right on the goal line, I believe it went out of play. Field hockey practicing behind us now on the other, other uh, full-size field, the practice turf. Sent towards the box, deflected, and it'll roll. Durfee can throw from the near side here. And there's number 11 for Durfee giving way to Marquez. Easy play there for Molina. Battling along the line, Damas trying to keep it in. It's New Bedford ball. He gets the bad news. Landing right in the circle. And a whistle coming at midfield, New Bedford will Get the free kick. That was set in motion there by Tavares. Sent to the near side here to Correas. Now Durfee. Passed up the field, got twisted up. A little bit of a push there as uh, Alfama was trying to make a play. Coming in hot, but it deflects the other way. Oh, 
on the ground and it'll go left of the post. Number 11 on the field is Evan Carvalho. There was a jersey change at the last moment, so not wearing number 20 today. Our athletic director, Brad Buston, on the other side of the field, so he checked in with the coaches for us. So Carvalho's number 11, not number 20 today. Another Whaler player, slow to get up and kind of hobbling off the field. We've seen a couple times that happening already. Tell you one thing though, after doing football last week and now being back here tonight, the field just looks absolutely spectacular. It's amazing to see. Be able to see lines again. <laughs> it, <laughs> it makes such a difference. And the emblem looks great. You know, we really branded the fields this time. You know, and that that's important too. Before it was just a plain green carpet basically, but it looks really good. Inacio will kick it away to the near side here, right to Cavallo. A little bit of fancy footwork now, gives it a ride to the middle of the field, looking for Alfama. Overshot him a little bit, but now it bounces back to Carvalho. There's Flores. Nice movement through traffic here for the Hilltoppers, but New Bedford's defense Really tight, you can't seem to spin around. The ball control's outstanding from Barros. Now loses it and it'll be a goal kick. Great effort though, man. And New Bedford will kick it away. Setting sun here, always a uh, challenge, trying to get the exposure just right. White balance constantly changing, but it does make for a pretty backdrop. I mean, the sky last week for football was just turned like basically purple at the very, right at kickoff. The last seconds of sun over uh, Wiedemo Street. Tumbling down goes uh, Rikiak. It'll be a free kick. Correa gets the whistle. Line drive and it's gonna hook to the right. I mentioned volleyball tomorrow. Football is away. Uh, 6.30 game across the way over at Somerset. They'll be back home next Friday for uh, Nauset. And take note, any home fans watching, um, a rare early start, 6.30 kickoff from here next Friday, which is the 20, 29th. Um, reason being is that Nauset has a rather long drive. And uh, so we agreed to start a little bit earlier so that they're not getting back home so late. And... Uh, so 6.30 kickoff from Durfee next week.
Waiting on the throw on the far side. <laughs> Halfway done here with the first. Scoreless game through 20 minutes. And Durfee has uh, absolutely controlled the pace of play. Most of play has been on the south side in New Bedford territory. Inacio has been able to really uh, come out almost to almost outside of the box, um, right to the edge of it at the, at the very least because the ball hasn't come down his way very much. Line drive up the field, onside, a chance for Durfee, a lot of speed, tripped up in the box. No whistles. And it looks like it'll be a corner kick for Durfee. They were pointing to the corner. And yes, it will be. Barrows heading down. That's how the Lady Hilltoppers scored their second goal on Tuesday, which was the game winner. It was uh, Julia Hargraves to her sister off the head and right into the net. So corners do work. Pretty exciting play when everyone's bunched up there in the box. That time, no good for Durfee. Out of play. Topper is going to get another free kick as Bursa quote went down. And it looks like Correa once again has been handling the free kicks. Big kick. Wow, that's going to sail right out of the field of play. Durfee will have a free kick from the same spot. Saw the uh, line judge raise the flag, kind of a delayed whistle. The, our main official on the field didn't see him at the, at the time, but I think it was hands. There wasn't any contact player to player, and it, the ball did take a bounce. I think that was the call. Better kick that time. Header off the post, and now cleared out by the Whalers. My gosh. It got by <laughs> Molina. He was not able to make a play on it and there was a lot of open space. And the post taking it away. Cleared out, coming sidelines and out of bounds. Durfee can throw. Shot taken. Kind of danced in the air a bit. Looks like it deflected a little bit. Durfee clapping. I think it did get deflected. Yeah, Durfee's going to get the corner out of this.
All right, here we go. Kind of a lower kick this time. A little easier to defend. Anasio backpedaling. Clears it out. He was all the way out of the box at around the 20-yard line. And a whistle coming. Little too much contact. Some of it was incidental, and then that second loss of balance from Bersaquo. He was kind of leaning on Guardado, and the Whalers will get the free kick out of it. Gabriel Pixoto will send it away here. Cleared out. New Bedford making a couple changes, waiting on Mejia on the far side. He'll throw in. Not a running start, it's kind of a flat-footed throw. And that'll go out of bounds, now Durfee will have it. Wow, look at the speed of Durfee, closing fast and Molina has to crouch down and kind of smother the ball, protecting it and himself. Coach Mello said there's a ton of athleticism on this team, more than he's seen in quite a few years, and that includes the speed. Says now it's kind of a matter of harnessing it a little bit, you know, and, and making it work as a team and not just individual skill players. Um, and of course, that's, again, you know, we're in game six of the year, so a quarter of the way through the season. Those things tend to work themselves out, especially if the team's doing well before the halfway mark. That one skied and going into the bleachers. Down in front, Durfee centering pass out of the net. And a save by the Whalers, Molina. And it looks like there's a foul here. And I think Durfee's gonna have a, a PK. The Whalers pleading their case. Can't believe it, but it looks like Durfee may be getting the penalty kick. And you may recall from last year, penalty kicks were a big part of this series. Durfee was down in the matchup here, and they tied it with a penalty kick. It's actually the highlight of it is in our intro, in our open for, for this season. And um, that goal tied up the game, and Durfee ended up not losing it. it. They forced a tie, and that penalty kick came very late in the game. So here we go. Correa against Molina. for the lead, it's good! <laughs> Top right corner and the Hilltoppers take a one nothing lead late in the first. I'm gonna reset the clock here to 11.50 and pick it up here with the running clock in the stadium.
Pass up the field, broken up. They were looking for uh, Gabriel Ferreira. And now a free kick for Durfee on the other side of the field. Out of bounds, New Bedford ball. Whalers making another change here. We have to wait. That's Michael O'Leary coming in. I think the tallest player on the roster. I mean, when I was talking to Coach Masarocco, he was pretty close by, and I'm, I'm looking up at him. I'm 6'2". <laughs> Very tall player. Um, yeah, definitely the tallest on the on the field, that's for sure. And there he is, getting the ball. Good footwork there from Damas, and he'll throw in, or Durfee will throw in. That'll clear. Header by Sokol. Had one of the Whalers breaking. Shot taken and Inacio able to smother it, but that got dicey very quick. Chance for Durfee down in the corner. Had to wait for some help. Tripped up down low. And it's going to be a goal kick. No foul that time. This one's going to sail right out of bounds. Pretty ugly collision there. And a timeout here. As we'll stop the clock. Maybe it looked worse than it was for Marquez. Taking a moment here. Wow, what speed right there. Chasing it down. That was Flores.
Taken away by Durfee's defense. Sent right back up the field. Look at the speed from Durfee. Shot taken and just wide of the post. Full sprint. That was Bersaquo and Ferreira. Just flat out beat New Bedford to the ball and were able to create an opportunity for themselves. Out of play. Five minute marker here at the stadium. Clock will freeze. We can run it down though on the broadcast. So here we go. We wrap up the first half here. New Bedford got away with hands right before that last shot from Durfee. And now Hilltopper down. Two Hilltoppers down. That was Marquez again. He, you know, we saw him just went down on this side a couple moments ago. Stretching out. He's holding the ankle, the right ankle. That's twice now he's gone down. That didn't draw the whistle, believe it or not. It was a foul on the other side while he was down that drew the whistle. So Jerfy's going to have a free kick here from a pretty decent spot. Oh, man, I think that might have been touched as well, but great save from Molina. Good, strong kick up the field again. Another free kick, and on the header, out of the box it goes. Hilltoppers trying to turn it around. Th four on one. Pass down to the corner, and it will go out of play. The corner kick for Durfee. Nice effort there by Carvalho. He kicked it out off of the Whaler defender. Up in the air, bouncer, 
And over the crossbar with a little help from the defense. And now we'll do it again. A corner from the other side. As the first half winding down here. About a minute or a little less than. Our clock running once the five minutes hits. We're always a little bit quicker than on field. Bouncer in front again. The defenders lofting it kind of straight up. Not really clearing it. Now it's out of the box. Clock stopped. Not much left here in this first half. Out of bounds. Bedford player down on the field. So a timeout here, official timeout. Drew are throwing in from the far side. Pass down ahead for the Whalers. That looked offside. Out of bounds. Chris Gonzalez trying to make a play. First real pass and break, if you will. Not quite a total break, but an actual opportunity to put one on net. And that's the first half. Hilltoppers with the one nothing lead. After 40 minutes of play, thanks to the penalty kick from Gilberto Correa. That's the difference so far. You see the really pretty dusk sky here at Durfee High School and Mac Aldridge Field. It's a 10 minute halftime break. Usually ends up a little shorter than that. We will see you on the other side of it as we leave you with pictures of the south end and the brand new softball field over at the Durfee Complex. Stay with us, okay? More, so more soccer coming your way. It's time for spring cleaning. Watupa Rowing Center is uniquely located on South Watupa Pond in Fall River, the only school of its kind in the region, tuition free and open to all. At Watupa Rowing Center, we're really looking for you. There's so much potential here, guys. Like, you can be a part of something so cool. South Watupa is a non-tidal freshwater pond large enough to accommodate a six-lane race course. For most of the year, we are out on the water, and during the winter months, our rowers head inside for strength and conditioning. I thought it would be a good idea just to try it, and I came here and now I'm stuck, I guess. <laughs> I love it. We like to have athletes that or kids that like want to learn to row, no matter the background, because that is how you get the diversification. This is a sport that can fit anybody who wants to do it. Our schedule is flexible. When you are ready, we are here. We want to make you the best you can be. We're kind of up and coming. What we want is to make sure that rowing is accessible to anybody and everybody who wants to try it. From your first practice to your first regatta, our experienced coaches will be there to support and encourage you. 
I've been looking for a new hobby, so I tried it out, um, the summer program, and I really liked it. At first it's going to seem real hard, but the more that you do it, the easier it gets. Student rowers learn hard work, dedication, and integrity. Vital skills that directly transfer to real life off the water. Crew is the ultimate team sport. Ready and go! When we get in that boat, we know we all have to watch out for each other, make sure we're all doing our jobs, because each part of the boat has their own job. And if you're not doing your job, then someone else is going to suffer. Rowing can be another course to higher education. You might even be eligible for scholarships. Our goal for us as coaches, right, is to like build that foundation right now, get those kids, get high school kids, get middle school kids that might like to do it, and hopefully they love the sports as much as we do, that they want to take it to the next level. At Watupa Rowing Center, there is so much to see, so much to learn, and so much to love, and it's right here where you live. For more information, visit our website at watupparowingcenter.org. I'm Mike Labossier, Watupper Reservation Forester. And I'm Paul Furlan, the Administrator of Community Utilities. Protecting open space is a benefit today, and it's a gift to future generations. For over 150 years, Fall River has been a leader in environmental preservation. The southeastern Massachusetts Bioreserve ensures forests and fields remain undeveloped and accessible. The Community Preservation Act is a vital component to fulfill climate goals. Since 2017, CPA funds totaling nearly $1.3 million have been used to acquire conservation areas in Fall River. Educational programs within the bioreserve connect families to nature and promote understanding and respect for diverse culture, history, and wildlife. Half of Fall River, about 12,000 acres, an area the size of Mattapoisa, is protected water and woodland. Healthy forests minimize flooding, reduce erosion, and provide habitat for endangered species. As the region expands manufacturing and technology, people are directly reliant on green infrastructure as an irreplaceable source of clean water and air. Miles of trails wind through unique landscapes which appeal to hikers, cross-country skiers, and mountain bikers. Specific areas are open for safe seasonal hunting. The Bioreserve promises endless discoveries and recreational experiences year-round. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment. I'm Kristen Cantara Oliveira. I'm a member of the Community Preservation Committee and the Historical Commission. Welcome to the Lafayette Durfee House. I'm David Jennings, curator. Built in 1750, this is one of the best living history representations in Massachusetts. Judge Thomas Durfee, the original owner, was also an admired patriot. Judge Durfee made sizable purchases of equipment and weapons to outfit Revolutionary War soldiers, including his own son. Generals and Minutemen frequently met here for secret and strategic military planning. But by the 1970s, the home's significance was largely forgotten and it was slated for demolition. Preservationists rallied, first to fund the restoration and secondly to resurrect interest in the heroic Durfee family. The original frame and foundation are intact. Craftsmen work tediously to repair or replace decorative elements. Visitors are encouraged to handle artifacts and work alongside artists. The Lafayette Turfey House is included in the National Register of Historic Buildings and exceeds standards of the Secretary of the Interior. However, time continuously ravages the one-of-a-kind structure. Grants from the Community Preservation Committee, as well as monetary contributions, spearhead the efforts of tireless volunteers. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment. The school administration building at 417 Rock Street was built over 100 years ago by craftsmen from around the globe. 
and Mr. and Mrs. William Brennan, mill owners, raised their nine children in this statement home. Decades later, the property became too costly for a single family and was gifted to the Four River School District. Architects reconfigured the 22 rooms to accommodate administrative staff. By 2018, this historic structure was compromised, eliciting mold and water damage. Once dubbed the last big house on the hill, this extraordinary piece of architecture was in poor condition. Care was shown to restore artistic elements, including the circular railing and banister, chair rails, crown molding, antique and oak flooring, and the building is now handicap accessible. Roof work was the primary concern for the Brayton House. This new pitch surface directs water to a modernized drainage system. Ten years ago, four of our residents voted to adopt the Community Preservation Act, which allows for a 1.5% surcharge on property tax bills to incentivize history, travel, diversity, and recreation. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment. We welcome you back to Mac Aldridge Field. Evan Massoud with you for boys soccer. September 21st, next week is the last full week of September. How did that happen? Durfee up one nothing as we get ready here for the second half. They're hosting their rivals, the New Bedford Whalers. That one nothing score thanks to a penalty kick. And as I mentioned, um, when it happened, last year's game, or games, uh, the penalty kicks were a big part of the story, and particularly the one here, because Durfee was down one nothing until very late in the game, and then ended up pulling even with a penalty kick. So, um, interesting that that situation has come up once again. So here we go, second half underway. I will say, uh, Durfee, you know, just thinking about the, sec the first half here, we saw New Bedford's defense really tested. Um, even when the ball got to Durfee's side of the field, the defenders were able to just full send, get the ball in the air and pass it, you know, a good 30, 40 yards in the air. And then it's all the way back down New Bedford's side of the field again. So the Hilltoppers absolutely, uh, in terms of a time of possession and you know controlling the pace of play, they, they've won that battle tonight. I'm sure they would like another goal, kind of pad that lead a little bit, give themselves just a little cushion. You know, just the one goal keeps New Bedford in it. But you put a second one up there and makes the task much more challenging if you're the Whalers. Strong throw, gets to the middle of the box. It bounces and it's picked out of the air by Molina. And he'll punch it away. Little chip shot towards the goal, and again, right into the hands of Molina. Thought about throwing it, but he would have been throwing it right at two hilltoppers, wisely did not, and punts it away again. That's a really strong kick. But see, once again, a big pass from the defense from Durfee, and all the way right back down the other end of the field. Third straight time Molina's had to play the ball.
Well, we left you uh, before the halftime break with a shot. Final bits of natural light. You can see the new softball stadium in the backdrop just to the right of the field here, further south and in the complex. And I'll tell you, I don't want to rush the school year, don't get me wrong. But, uh, man, I can't wait for spring sports this year because we'll finally be back on campus for baseball and softball. Softball has not played here since 2018, since the 2018-19 school year. Um, so, been a long time. And uh, baseball, of course, last year. You know, did get one game in, but uh, had an extremely challenging season with their basically all road schedule. And so it'll be nice to finally have basically everything back home. This was no simple project, you know, building a new high school. Shot taken, and it's going to sail over the bar. And, you know, building a high school and still being able to exist in the old one while the construction and not you know be displaced i mean it's you know it's not an easy thing this was a huge huge project uh you know diamond's feeling it now um you know they were without um home facilities for fall sports just a couple years ago um when they redid that field and part of the reason they put grass and not turf like we see here like Durfee just replaced with more of the artificial uh, is because they didn't want to spend the money they knew they were probably going to be in the runnings for a new school in a short time and uh, that's what we're seeing now so um, you know for Diamond they're playing at Swansea Y they're playing at Britland Park and they're playing um, they're utilizing the Bishop Conley facilities now that Conley has closed so They've, they've had quite the challenges in terms of scheduling and, you know, finding locations to play their home games. And uh, so, we, I mean, we know what it's about. We went through it. I can assure you the end result is well worth it. We're seeing it. Um, but it's, it's going to be uh, a few tough years over at Diamond for their athletics, too. You know, and this of course, the first year is always the most challenging because you're kind of getting used to it. And, you know, everybody's accustomed to just being home um you know you got to think about busing for everything and adjusting schedules for travel and getting kids out of school dismissed that maybe wouldn't have to be dismissed for home games that now do have to get dismissed it's not it's, it's not a fun thing so a yellow card there issued by our officials to Coach Masarocco of the Whalers. Obviously said something that they didn't like. Down the field it goes and out of play. Um, all of that said about Diamond, you know, we certainly haven't forgot about Diamond. We do plan on um, some coverage here in the fall. But in terms of the outdoor sports, most of the places that they're holding their games, um, you know, don't have power or, you know, we'd have to rely on cell service and they're not in good areas. You know, we tried um, softball in the spring at the Y and it was – it was dicey. It, the product was not very good. And um, so we'll we'll make it a point to try to get some highlights at the very least. That's kind of our goal. Uh, but for Diamond, kind of a tough situation, obviously. You know, 
going to, you know, for example, Britland. I mean, it's a park. The bleachers are three rows high, and there's no power uh, for us down there. So kind of makes doing a broadcast near impossible. But it doesn't mean we can't have a camera crew down there and getting some highlights, and that's that's our plans, you know, for, for some of these outdoor games. Same with football. Be across the street at Conley. Um, so... We'll have Bengal sports, but it'll be in conjunction with some of these live games here at, at Durfee, and we'll we'll run them that way during halftime breaks and stuff like that, and, and then we'll segment them for the Diamond fans afterwards so that easily to be found, you know, just as a separate upload on our YouTube channel and on Facebook. Good news is girls volleyball and uh, I believe basketball for Diamond will still be I know girls volleyball for sure they're playing at the gym but uh, I believe basketball will be, be able to play at home this year so going to be a corner kick for the Hilltoppers From the far side of the field. Whistle coming from the box. And it'll be the Whalers. That was Carvalho with the corner kick for Durfee. Put it in a good spot, had a good hook to it. Curling back towards the front of the net. Taken away by Ferreira. Ferreira around the defender. Knocks him down and the whistle comes in. And it looks like New Bedford was actually called on that foul. So Durfee's going to get a free kick here from basically the corner of the box. Damas, they are way too close to the ball. That's not 10 paces. Come on now. That's 10. There we go. Yeah. Five paces doesn't fly. <laughs> and only electing to go with two players. It's easy to hook around that. And they tried for it. Oh, Molina batting it away. That had the top right corner written all over it. Perfect placement from Damas. And Durfee will get the corner kick from the far side. Perfect placement, better save, and now a corner. Header towards the backside here, not able to hook it towards the net. And that's going to go out of play. Bertsuko trying to weave his way through traffic, but unsuccessful in doing so. Ten minutes. Gone here in the second half as we roll up on the 30 minute marker, 30 minutes remaining, I should say. 10 minute marker. A great opportunity on that free kick right there for Durfee. But unable to capitalize. Chasing it down and out of play. It'll go. And 
it looks like the Whalers will get a corner kick out of this for themselves. And a quick transition up the field in New Bedford. We'll get a shot. That one not really hooking at all. And it worked out though as Anasio had to make a play. Climbed the ladder on it and snagged it in the air. And he'll roll it out. Sent that to Correa. Bersico loses it. Went toe to toe right there with Jean Pierre. And out of bounds. Oh, that's going to be a foul. You know, face in the hands, you pushed him down. It's not that difficult to... More upset that he got caught, I think, than anything. <laughs> Hilltoppers will have another free kick. Oh, that's going to be another whistle. That's a foul against Jerfy. A lot of stoppages in play here in the second half. Not really getting a good rhythm here. It's not to feel like field hockey. Too many stoppages. Passed up ahead. Turning, and it's off the side of the net. may notice uh, the soccer goals, kind of a new design, because they are new. <laughs> the, that orange um, antenna, if you will, keeping tension, um, kind of like a volleyball net in a way. So the, the back of the net is not really loose. It's kind of a boxed out net. Chance for the Whalers. They got some numbers. Durfee was late getting back. Now they've gotten back there and they clear it out. The footwork and the aggressiveness of Durfee has just been outstanding. This Again, my first look at the team this year and thoroughly impressed what we're seeing. Down low, loose ball cleared away.
Free kick for the Whalers on its way. Oh, a break offside by quite a bit. <laughs> Good boot all the way down in the box and headed out right at the edge of it. Shot taken and well to the side of the net, but it was deflected out off of the Hilltoppers, so the Whalers will get themselves another corner kick. That's Troy Rocha on the far side. And here comes the kick. Played cleanly. And now coming to the sideline, Durfee will beat it. That's Carvalho. Oh, pardon me, excuse me, Correa. Out of play. Durfee leaped. That should be a goal kick. I don't think it touched the Hilltopper defender there. It did not. Nice job to leap and avoid the ball. So uh, Inacio will kick it away. Played on the ground, passing far side, and now full send on the line. Two players down, out of bounds, no fouls. And it'll be a throw in. Oh no, excuse me, foul against Jurphy. Free kick from the sideline. That's a foul. New Bedford on the season has struggled scoring. While they have two wins and a tie, they haven't scored more than two in a game. In the first two games, they were shut out. Now, they played Wellesley, Attleboro, tied Barnstable last time. You know, the schedule in terms of, say, D1 opponents, a little bit um, stronger than Durfee, at least in the early goings, you know, because Durfee had Somerset. They did have Taunton, but they had Somerset and Diamond on the calendar, so... Um, and not to be taken lightly, but they are lower division schools uh, as opposed to a Wellesley. You know, Attleboro, like I said, Barnstable. So um, another shot taken, and it's just wide to the left. It's going to be a corner kick for Durfee. Apparently deflected on its way by and out of bounds. Patrick Barros will kick it away. We are 
under 20 minutes here, halfway through the second. Durfee still clinging to the one nothing lead. Cleared out. Durfee, little dangerous situation there. Almost had a uh, two, on, two on the goalie for New Bedford and Hilltoppers able to break that up. And now a free kick for the Hilltoppers. Pass up the field, it's a foot race, and Asio will come out and clear it. Great play. Oh, tripped up again. Hilltoppers wanted a whistle on that one. You could hear the bench. We're both players going down together. Bertsequo going to send it backwards, trying to spread it out a little bit. And we'll stop the clock here. We've got an injury timeout. Our trainer, Kelly Mahoney, making her way out to the field. That was Marquez again. We saw him go down, kind of tumble down twice in the first half, stretching out the ankle, and now will be taken off the field by Mahoney. Another free kick for Durfee. Our head official speaking with athletic director Brad Buston. Now making his way onto the field. Or back onto the field. Off cam to our right. We'll see him in a moment. There he is.
Oh, nice move, and he lost possession. Comes back, top of the box shot taken. Molina with the save. Cleared out. Durfee with a three on three here. Now three on four, kind of slowed up. Now Fama did a little too much with it. Lost possession, they had numbers down the field. And now Alfama coming out. Hilltoppers making some changes here. I believe that's Ferreira back in. Yes, it is. And New Bedford with a late substitution after Durfee had already made theirs. And that's O'Leary back out. Well, the Whalers want a, wanted a penalty, and they didn't get it. Timeout on the field here. Stadium stopped at 14.15. And we'll take a quick break as well. We'll see you in 60 seconds. Hi, my name is Laura Ferreira. I am the Director of Traffic and Parking for the City of Fall River. As the school year begins, we want to remind everyone of the school zone safety laws. Crosswalks are here for a reason, your safety. Please use them. Always wait for a crossing guard to stop traffic and escort you safely. Drivers, please use caution when entering a school zone. 20 mile per hour speed limits are strictly enforced as mandated by state law. By being respectful and patient with one another, we can all arrive at our destination on time and in one piece. Thank you for your attention. If you have concerns or questions, please contact my office at 508-324-2123. Let's have a wonderful school year. And we are back at Mac Aldridge Field. Both teams huddled up. Just a couple more seconds left in their timeout. It was the Hilltoppers who called for it. 14 minutes, 15 seconds remain. Hilltopper scoring a little after halfway through the first on a penalty kick. And that's been it so far.
I've never seen so much talking done by the head official of a, of a game. We've had so much wasted time tonight. Let's go. Talking to the athletic director, talking to both coaches, talking while they're setting up for corner kicks. My goodness, it just breaks up the flow of the game. Look at our goalie. Anasio's sitting here, taking a break. They should have stayed in the huddle. They could have gotten another 60 seconds of a timeout. Goodness, back to the action, finally. That didn't go out of bounds. Picked it up before it went out. Whalers with a free kick down the field. Shot taken, hooking, and it's good! <laughs> Careless, you just went in the timeout. Tie game. That's, that's really bad. I know it's a mental mistake. I mean, it happens, but sheesh. You just came out of the timeout. Had to wait a little while. Hmm. One, one the score, it's a new ball game. Durfee will throw. And it's Freitas, very strong thrower. Still in play in the box. Still lofted and a big stretch from Molina. Easy play for Inacio that time. Batting it down from the ear. And right back to him. Ferreira gets by one defender. Be a tough turn here, trying to get around Rocha. He does, centering pass. It's sent back where it came from. It'll go out, Durfee will have to throw. did not go out of bounds this far up the field. Try like seven yards further up, around the 30. <laughs> Running start for Freitas. Correa went down. 
Now back to Inacio who was well out of the goal. Playing forward and aggressive as he usually does. Correa tripped up. And he's safe. <laughs> Free kick for Durfee. High booming kick, and it is caught. <laughs> Passed back to Inacio. Mm, kind of off the toes. Oh! Big collision. Another tough collision, two more players down. Ferreira, Fedurfi tied up with Rocha, checking the forehead. Kick on its way for the Whalers. Herrera trying to turn it around. Gets it to the near side to Mejia. Now to Rocha, Inacio comes out, scoops it. Big throw down the field, good range. Sent down in the corner. Bersico backing up on it. Whalers closing, trying to get around. Kept in, and now out of bounds it goes. And it should be a goal kick for Molina. No, it's going to be a corner. Ferreira will do the honors. On the ground, comes right back to him. Tripped up in the box. No foul, it's gonna be another corner. A 
It's not going to be a corner. It's actually a free kick from outside. Oh, no, it is going to be a. Okay, it is a corner. Shouldn't be a corner, but it is. Hilltoppers making a substitution, so quick delay here before Ferreira can kick it away. Header leaves the box. And up the field it goes. Collision on the far side, out of bounds, off away from the ball. Nice job by Bursaquo to keep it in play. Durfee all kind of bunched up here, spread it out. You got help. Hands. Hands. Practically a basketball dribble. I don't know how much clearer you want it to be. That's a bad miss right there. Two officials watching the play. Murphy's speed coming in again. Broken up. Nice defense from the Whalers. I see a card. That card issued to Ferreira. So Durfee will lose him for the moment. Deep kick and right into the hands of Anasio. Again, quickly throwing it out, not electing to kick it away. But it gets a quicker transition. Good pass down low for Durfee. Down in the box, out of bounds.
A chance again for Durfee, deep down the field, and it's just wide left. Missing the post. You can't say Durfee hasn't had their chances, I'll tell you. Flores with the stretch, keeping it down that side of the field. Out of bounds. Timeout called by the Whalers with seconds left in the game. They'll have a free kick from up the field. We'll keep it here for the timeout. Let's take a look at the road ahead here for both sides. For New Bedford, they will return home for their next two games. They're playing Saturday morning against Nauset, and then they'll host Brockton next Tuesday. So Saturday at 11, Tuesday at 6. Then they're on the road and they'll rematch against Nauset next Thursday, a week from today. For Durfee, they hit the road, they're gone for four games. At BR next Tuesday, then a Saturday game at Somerset, then Tuesday the third at Brockton, I'm sorry, three games. Yeah, not two. They have Brockton on here twice. Um, and then Thursday the 5th is a home game against Diamond. So that has changed because that was... <clears throat> you got to double check on that one. Because um, that was not supposed to be a home game I think that's incorrect. That should be a road game. Because, yeah, Durfee already had the home game earlier in the year. That should be a road game at 3.30 at Britland. It shouldn't be home. The girls are supposed to be home for Diamond that day. Let's double check and see their schedule. Yeah, that that's an error on the boys' side of things on Arbiter. So that means they're technically away for their next eight games. That's why I mentioned October 24th earlier. Um So a long stretch away from home for Durfee coming up. As teams break the timeout. It'll be Rocha on the free kick. With seconds remaining in the game. A lot of scrambling in front. Ball on its way. Hilltoppers get it out, and that's the game. But for Durfee, a disappointing night. They had a lead that they saw disappear about 60 seconds of carelessness in what was a really sharp game, I thought, for Durfee. But a mental mistake, and the Whalers took advantage. So it's Durfee's first tie on the season. It's better than a loss, that's for sure. But a really tough goal for Durfee to allow against their arch rivals. For New Bedford now, deuces wild across the board. Two, two, and two their record. Two wins, two ties, and two losses for New Bedford. 
Always an entertaining game. A long game tonight. 8 o'clock here. Basically a two-hour game. That's, that's kind of rare, but we had a lot of stoppages, especially in the second half here. But nonetheless, another entertaining one from Mac Aldridge Field. Join us tomorrow. We'll wrap up the week with girls volleyball from the Fieldhouse, a 5:15 scheduled varsity match against the New Bedford Whalers. We hope to see you then. Remember, we live stream on our Facebook page, Fred TV Sports. Like and follow us so that you don't miss a minute of the action. And on our YouTube channel where we archive everything, you can subscribe to us there under the same name. For our cameraman tonight, Jake Fitzgerald, I'm Evan Massoud. We'll see you tomorrow.